Patience friends, welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to be reviewing my monthly Scentbird pick, and it's from Tadashi Soji, and it's Eau de Rose. So if you'd like to know what I think about this fragrance, then keep watching. So this fragrance was released in 2017, more on the, like, I think it was like April or May. So not really early on in the year. Uh, the notes in this are bergamot, lemon, mandarin, grapefruit, rhubarb, and black currant at the top. At the heart, you're going to have rose, jasmine, osmanthus, lily of the valley, and cedarwood. At the base, you have musk, frankincense, lazenum, patchouli, rose, and oud. Now, what got me excited was the oud, was the lazenum, was the frankincense, with this really kind of bright tart opening. It seemed like this was supposed to be kind of like a really strong oriental rose fragrance that had a lot of sweetness and tartness to it, and that actually really excited me. So this fragrance is, um, I think you can only get it a few places. I think full price, it's like 100, 110 bottles. The presentation of it's really gorgeous. And I'm not let down by this fragrance, but I'm not inspired by this fragrance either. This opens up really nice. The currant and the rhubarb play hand in hand together. Um, the currant is very sweet and jammy and the rhubarb is very tart and they kind of balance each other out. It's really, really nice. Then you've got the mandarin, and then you've got the florals in the center. Specifically, the lily is really strong. Now, this is a predominantly rose fragrance, so if you don't like rose, you won't like this at all. But I was really hoping the frankincense and the oud would be a little, little bit stronger. But I can understand from a first fragrance, because this is their first fragrance they released, that they probably also wanted to play it a little bit safe. And that's what this fragrance smells like to me. This fragrance smells like a generic mainstream rose scent that would come out from a designer house. And as much as that is exactly what this is, uh, the fact that it was supposed to be a little bit more special, a little bit more interesting, having a little bit more going for it, kind of left me a little bit uninspired. However, the fact of the matter is, is overall, it really is a nice rose scent. I like the fact that the rhubarb takes away some of that sweet jamminess. And as much as I love a jammy rose, when you have black currant or any type of red berries with rose, specifically when there's also like oud or patchouli, they all smell identical. It's kind of like when vanilla and amber and tonka bean come together. They just really start smelling the same. So I actually kind of like that the rhubarb kind of cut through and added almost a little bit of a tart acidity to this fragrance, which made it a little bit lighter and brighter. Now, the notes that I don't get in here, <laughs> I do not get labdanum, I do not get osmanthus. Osmanthus is a flower on my skin. It pulls kind of like honey and like hay. I really like osmanthus. I don't get any of that in here. And I actually think if it pulled a little bit more hay, it might make the oud a little bit more barnyard and might balance everything out. And that sounds, I know that sounds so weird guys, but if you know, barnyard ouds, you can know what I'm talking about. And sometimes you need that kind of funky skank to really add depth and elevate fragrances, specifically when you have something really fruity, really jammy, really syrupy and sweet. You need something to counteract that. And the thing that is counteracting that is the rhubarb, but the rhubarb is very short lived. So although you do have this night nice tart, sour acidicness in the opening from the rhubarb, it only lasts for about an hour. Now I will say that this fragrance has fantastic longevity. I get like 10 hours on my skin, so that is phenomenal. But because the best part of this fragrance to me, which is the rhubarb, disappears after the first hour, I'm left with a very generic kind of sweet syrupy rose scent. Maybe after a few hours, I pick up a little bit of frankincense in the background, but there's really nothing else more, nothing much else to this fragrance. Now, it sounds like I'm saying a lot of negatives and I'm not saying it's a bad fragrance. I actually think it's really pretty. It's very wearable, really beautiful, sweet rose scent. I really like the cedar wood in this. I really like the little touch of other fruits in this, specifically the mandarin. And the rose is on display the entire time of this fragrance. So the fact that it is eau de rose and it is a predominantly rose fragrance, I can't knock it for that. But I will say that I was expecting something a little bit more special, maybe something a little bit more sparkly. Um, 
and I'm left with something that just feels like it's just another generic rose fragrance that's come out from a designer house. And to me, if you're going to be launching fragrances, if this is going to be your first fragrance in in the fragrance world for your house, I feel like it needs to be something spectacular. And I feel like this falls a little bit flat. But projection-wise, longevity-wise, it's great. It's a nice rose fragrance. It has a lot of fantastic things going for it. If I were to give this a grade, I'd probably give it a B. It's not bad. But I would hope for something where you see frankincense and labdanum and oud and cedar and patchouli and rose and rhubarb and all these things. It just kind of feels like it could easily just be blackcurrant, mandarin, rose, cedar wood, and um, maybe just a little bit of patchouli. Uh, a little bit. It doesn't smell like it has all those other fantastic notes in it. It doesn't smell complex. It doesn't even really smell specifically linear. It does have a little bit. It does develop on the skin a little bit, but the beautiful, the most beautiful part about this is really the first hour where you get the beautiful tartness from the rhubarb, and I'm talking way too much about this. <laughs> kind of going off on like how I feel because I did have a lot of feelings. I did have a lot, a lot of anticipations for this fragrance. So it is very wearable. It is really nice, but I feel if you're looking for some inspirational, new, amazing rose scents, you probably have smelled something like this before. But the price isn't bad, even at full price. It's not crazy expensive. It is a very quality juice and it is worth checking out, but I was left a little bit more bump about it. Anyway, that's my thoughts on Tadashi Soji Eau de Rose. Um, I might, I mean, I'm going to wear this more because I do like rose fragrances and it's very nice. I don't know if this is something I would pick up full size, but I did enjoy wearing it. I just kind of wish the rhubarb was little bit longer on my skin but anyway thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope you enjoyed it guys if you've tried this fragrance or you've had any anticipation with this fragrance let me know in the comment section below as always i like having this be a conversation i like knowing what you guys think and i know that this was a new release and there was a little bit of buzz around it so i'd like to know what you guys think if you guys like my fragrance review <laughs> If you guys like my fragrance videos, there we go. Remember to give this video a thumbs up. It lets me know to continue doing videos like this. And also don't forget to subscribe because it's free and I'm free. And I put out new videos every Monday through Friday and sometimes on the weekends as well. So I'll always have something free to watch. In any case, I hope you guys are all happy and healthy and have a great day, month, year, whatever. And I'll see you next time.